Um, now we can actually use this result and we can uh, think about the rules that we already know and work out uh, cos and tan. Okay? Think about this. The derivative of cos. Okay? Now, I could do this whole exercise again, okay? and you would notice the same thing. Okay? But let's see if we can do this another way. Because you guys know how to deal with this kind of thing um, if this is in terms of a function you already know. Now, sine and cosine, right? Does anyone know what the co in cosine stands for? It's, a, it's an abbreviation. It stands for complement. Not as in, um, <laughs> not as in nice haircut, but as in it adds up to 9 degrees, or pi and 2, right? In other words, when you have cosine of x, okay, that's actually sine of, uh, shut up, I'm thinking degrees, aren't I? 9 degrees minus x. Okay, that's an identity, and you can test it out. You know, cos of uh, 20 is equal to sine of 70. Or a more common example, sine of 30 is cos of 60. Okay, if they add up to 90 degrees, you're happy. So therefore, what can I put in here? This is the derivative of sine 90 degrees minus x. Okay? 90 degrees minus x. Now, what rule do we need to differentiate this? This is a function, you could use first principles. We are going to in a second, but you guys know a faster way. Surely you know a faster way. This is a chain rule, isn't it? Sine is a function, and then you've got 90 degrees minus x, which is also a function, right? So how does chain rule work? You do the inside, then you do the outside. What's the derivative of the inside? It's just, it's just the coefficient. Yeah. What's the derivative of the outside? It's sine, so it should turn into cos. Okay, now, uh, this is true, but I can do it a bit neater, because I just said, you know, up here, this relationship is reciprocal. So cos of 90 minus x is sine. Right? And I've got a minus sine up the front. Now, hold on a second, that's confusing. Sine goes into cos, but cos goes into minus sine. Why is that? Well, let's do a, um, let's do a, a quick abbreviated version of um, this whole illustration, but let's do it for cos. There's cos. What's its gradient doing? For the first half of the graph, from 0 to 180, what is the sign of the gradient function? It's negative, right? So whatever derivative I've got, it's going to be down here, in this region. Okay? And then, of course, the second half of it, it's positive. Okay? So if you match up the sine curve to it, here's my um, gradient, it looks like this. Which, of course, is not sine. It's negative sine. Okay. All right. One more. We did sine. We did cos. So next we should do. <laughs> what? What a rebel! Now, um, I'm going to do this uh, and make it a little more obvious for you. Okay. Tan is just a. It's an identity, right? For this ratio. So what rule should we use? Quotient. Quotient rule. So there's my u. There's my v. Okay. Let's do our. Let's do our vuv on v squared. Okay. How good are we at this? V cos x times u dash. What is u dash? This is u, so u dash is just cos x. So cos x times cos x is? Cos x. Okay. Now the next part is minus, and then you do the oof of the wolf. So u, there's v, so what's v dash? Minus sine x. We just established it, right? So I've got two negatives here, so they cancel. So this is really cos squared plus sine squared on top, yes? So that's going to turn into an identity we know. The bottom is v squared. Okay, sorry, the next. So I've got 1. That's the Pythagorean identity there on cos squared. So, I mean, you could leave it like that, but it's simpler to use the reciprocal identity. Okay, so the derivative of tan is equal to sec squared. Okay? So, that was my intuitive approach. Basically, we're just looking at it and remembering what is the derivative about. It's just about gradient, right? And you can see it sort of follows this pattern. Um, but you, you can probably tell, sort of, I don't know how you're feeling in your seats right now. You're like, mm, I'm not really that sold on it. I mean, this was sort of shady. It was kind of like, oh, it's sort of close, you know, so why not? Okay. So that's why these earlier steps are about being more rigorous about our proof. Okay. So here's my intuitive approach. 
And these are all correct results, by the way, so don't you know, scratch it out of your board. But what we're going to do is go one step up the ladder. Let's approach this using first principles. Okay, so uh, I'm going to rub this off. 